Reproductive embryology. Female development. The normally growing malarian duct grows and forms the fallopian tube, uterus, cervix, and upper two-thirds of vagina. The normally regressing wolfian duct regresses. Remnant is paraophorin, epiophorin, and Gartner's duct. The normally developing external genitalia develop and form labia majora, labia minora, and clitoris. Detailed development of the female genital tract. We shall discuss this under the following points. Development of ovary. Development of uterus and fallopian tubes. Development of vagina. Development of external genitalia or vulva. Development of ovary. The ovary is developed from the genital ridge. The cranial end of the genital ridge becomes the infundibulo pelvic ligament. The ovary develops from the middle part of the genital ridge. The cortex and the covering epithelium are developed from the salamic epithelium and the medulla from the mesenchyme. The germ cells are endodermal in origin and migrate from the yolk sac to the genital ridge. The number of agonia reaches its maximum at 20th week. The ovaries descend during 7th to 9th months, and at birth they are situated at the pelvic brim. The bipotential gonad develops into an ovary about two weeks later than the testicular development. Descent of ovary. Similar to the testis, the ovary also descends down from the lumbar region into the pelvis. Gubernaculum is formed from the ovary to the labia majora. But this gubernaculum attaches midway to the junction, cornua, between the developing uterus and tubes. The part between the ovary and cornua becomes the ovarian ligament. The part between the cornua and labia majora becomes the round ligament. Development of internal genitalia. The internal genitalia, that is the uterus and the tubes, are developed from the malarian duct. The malarian ducts form both the tubes, the whole uterus and cervix, and the upper two-third of the vagina. There are three basic steps required here. Formation of two malarian ducts, fusion of both the ducts cotocranially, dissolution of intervening septum. Formation of two malarian ducts. In the fifth to sixth week of intrauterine life of the embryo, malarian ducts develop as an invagination of intermediate cell mass. Two malarian ducts develop, one on either side, and grow caudally. They approach each other in the midline after crossing the Wolfian duct and fuse. Fusion of both the ducts cotocranially. It begins by seven to eight weeks and is completed by 12 weeks. Dissolution of intervening septum. Initially, when the two malarian ducts fuse, an intervening septum is present, but later by the fifth month of intrauterine life, it also disappears. Development of vagina. Vagina develops from two sources, mainly from the malarian duct, forms upper two-third part, partly from the urogenital sinus, forms lower one-third part. These together form a solid vaginal plate. Canalization of the solid vaginal plate occurs at 20 weeks. If this canalization fails to occur, it leads to transverse vaginal septum. The mucous membrane of the vagina is derived from the endoderm of urogenital. The muscles of the vagina are derived from the mesoderm of malarian duct. Development of vulva. The external genital organs start developing almost simultaneously with the development of the internal genital organs, the site of origin is from the urogenital sinus. Clitoris is developed from the genital tubercle. Labia minora are developed from the genital folds. Labia majora are developed from the genital swellings. The hymen is developed from the junction of the malarian tubercle, mesodermal, and the urogenital sinus, endodermal. The Bartolin's glands are developed as outgrowths from the caudal part of the urogenital sinus and correspond to the bulbal urethral glands of male. The fate of the Wolfian duct. Malarian duct is also called paramesonephric duct. The Wolfian duct is also called mesonephric duct. Remnant of the cranial end of Wolfian body is epiophoron or organ of Rosenmuller, located near ovarian hylus. Remnant of the caudal end of Wolfian body is parophoron. The remnant of Wolfian duct is Gartner's duct. Gartner's cyst. 
it is a cyst in the remnant of the Wolfian duct. It is seen mainly in the anterolateral aspects of the vagina, mainly confused with cystocele. Identification Rugosides of vaginal mucosa, lost. Vaginal mucosa, tense and shiny. Margins well-defined. Non-reducible. No visible or palpable expansile cough impulse. Genital asymmetry. Genital asymmetry strongly suggests mixed gonadal dysgenesis. Mixed gonadal dysgenesis occurs due to Y-chromosome mosaicism, most commonly at 45X, 46XY karyotype, typically with the descended, partially dysgenetic testis on one side, usually the right, a shriek gonad with retained Mullerian remnants on the other side, and atypical genital appearance, often with asymmetry. The genital examination in individual with 45X or 46XY mosaicism reveals Clitorophallus is much longer than a typical clitoris, but short for a penis. Scrotal hypospadius, with a single elongated orifice for the urethra and vagina, and urogenital sinus, due to incomplete fusion of the genital plate and lack of separation of the urethra from the vagina. Partially fused labial scrotal folds with minimum rugation, wrinkling, or pigmentation. Gonad in the labial scrotal fold on the right, but not on the left. To summarize, indifferent ridge refers to the undifferentiated structure in females, ovary, and in males, testis. Primordial germ cells develop into ova in females and into spermatozoa in males. Sex cords consist of granulosa cells in females and semi-nefarious tubules with Sertoli cells in males. Mesonephric tubules from epiophoron and paraophoron in females and contribute to the development of efferent ductules and paradidymis in males. Mesonephric ducts form the Gartner ducts in females and contribute to the development of the epididymis, ductus deferens, and ejaculatory duct in males. The gubernaculum is associated with the utero-ovarian and round ligaments in females, while in males, it's linked to the gubernaculum testis. Paramesonephric ducts give rise to the uterus, fallopian tubes, and upper vaginal in females, while in males they contribute to the prostatic utricle and the appendix of the testis. The urogenital sinus develops into various structures in both sexes, including the bladder, urethra, vagina, paraurethral, bartolin glands, and lesser vestibular glands in females, and the bladder, urethra, prostatic utricle, prostate gland, and bulbal urethral glands in males. The genital tubercle forms a clitoris in females and the gland's penis in males. Urogenital folds differentiate into the labia minora in females and contribute to the formation of the floor of the penile urethra in males. Labial scrotal swellings develop into the labia majora in females and the scrotum in males. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.